Yeah, I'm on call today, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> Hi, hobbyists. I'm Sostein, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk about the history and making of an 18th century sewing kit, also called a housewife or housif. And FYI, I've seen a lot of different spellings of this over the years, so I'm just going to call it a housewife for the sake of this video, uh, just so that we can be consistent. But it's been called a lot of things, including a hussy. So let's just start with the simple questions. What is a housewife? Now, you may know it as, you know, a woman who stays at home and takes care of the family, but it's an older word for sewing kit. Even if you look at a modern dictionary today, you'll see that the second definition of housewife reflects this. In the past, it was referred to as a portable sewing kit. It's not the most thorough of definitions, but it's definitely something to work from. Let's take a deep dive into history, going all the way to 1740s to a novel called Pamela or Virtue Rewarded. This is one of the very first novels ever written and is often considered the first true English novel. It's an epistolary novel following the story of a servant girl who is pursued relentlessly by her boss, never mind that she's only 15, who is creepily all over her, but then she ends up winning him over with her virtue? In any case, let's skip ahead in this novel to volume one, chapter 32. So I went towards the pond, the maid following me, and dropped purposefully my hussy. And when I came near the tiles, I said, Mrs. Anne, I have dropped my hussy. Da, 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 da. The maid finding the hussy, I took it. The fact that the term hussy is used here highly suggests that the term housewife was already in use by the time this chapter came out, since this novel was designed to be understood by the common reader. These portable sewing kits were frequently carried around by soldiers, sewn for them by a sister or a beloved family member frequently, so that they could mend their own uniforms while they were on the battlefield. This became such a common definition for the housewife that the Collins Dictionary defines the secondary definition of the word housewife as exactly this. According to the Dreamstus, who's done a significant amount of research in the history of the housewife, an 1855 investigation into the poor performance of the British army in the Crimean War pointed out that the Russian soldiers all carried husifs, and that if the English army had done the same, English soldiers would not have been in rags at Sevastopol. In fact, in World War I, it was quite common for women to sew together housewives to send to soldiers on the front. And you could see one of these examples here. Now that we know the history of the word, and just that's cool trivia, let's talk about actual 18th century housewives. First and foremost, what did these 18th century housewives look like? They generally look like long rectangles that can be folded up a couple of inches wide by about 17 to 18 inches long. A few of these still exist today and have gone for auction in different auction houses. We even had the housewife of Abigail Adams and has beautiful embroidery on it. Honestly, these housewives, I think they're pretty gorgeous. I love that they use scraps, but frequently they're so beautifully embroidered. Like this one, you could see all the gorgeous stitching for the flowers. And then you have these ones. Um, they have some pretty odd looking faces on them. Other ones just, there's just so many. And I really love them. In truth, historically speaking, I imagine the actual housewives themselves were probably made with whatever scraps they had on hand or whatever lace they did, which is why some of them have just little bits of lace on them. And they, that's why some of the fabrics seem a little mismatched to us now, but it's just so cool that way. That being said, there are some records of some phenomenally expensive and beautiful housewives as well. For instance, Louis Bazalget, who lived from 1750 to 1830, was the tailor of the very ridiculous prince regent turned King George IV himself, and he records a housewife of his own. To a striped silk housewife filled with colored silks, threads, needles, and thimble for the pages. Now the pages were expected to perform running repairs to the royal wardrobe, so they would have been using these quite frequently. But what I'm seeing is that at heart, they reflect the people who use them and were designed to be useful for that specific person who was making them. So I do wonder what they put into different pockets 
and what they design them for. For instance, for the life of me, I have no idea what they put into these long pockets and what these numbers mean. I have no idea, but it's pretty cool. And I bet it's like just lost to time. Generally speaking, in the past year or so, making these have been all the rage in the historical community, with people making them in all sorts of fabrics and prints and colors and designs. And people also sell kits for them. Lady Tatale, one of my friends, along with offering gorgeous jewelry, sells some amazing housewife kits. And I personally used her pattern and directions to make mine. Willoughby and Rose sell some gorgeous kits inspired by the remnants of different historical costumers and also sell some beautiful ones inspired by different fandoms like Star Wars, including this one, which has an awesome like Star Wars wax, you know, since you need to wax your thread. Now, for me, of course, I went directly to the embroidered variants because it's me. For mine, last year, I made this grape one based on the embroidery that I'd had on my grape dress. And I just thought it'd be like a really cool housewife. So this is what I stitched together. And I, um, it's, I used remnants from other gowns. But this year, I wanted something different in a new housewife since while this is great, I found that some of these, it just didn't work all that well. It's not quite wide enough for all the different tools I wanted to put in it. So I wanted to make it again. Now, before I talk about designing and making my new housewife, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. If you've watched anything by me before, you'll know that I'm personally really into learning new things and consider myself a lifelong student. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has thousands of different classes that you can take. These classes come in a myriad of different topics as varied from making pizza to how to draw faces and cartoons to animation to how to use specific cameras to film and honestly, anything you can possibly imagine. Right now, I'm taking several classes on how to use my new camera more effectively, as well as one on filming in general. One class I'm taking is how to film solo without the FOMO, Filming Tricks for the One Person Crew by Dan Dan Liu, and she goes over what you need to do to film by yourself the way that I do. I love that this class is really short, so I could take the whole thing in one half hour while my son is taking a nap. But even longer classes are broken down into smaller chunks, 10 minutes or less, so that I can learn in bite-sized pieces that are never overwhelming for my busy day. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you so much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Now, several people sent me the link for this beautiful pouch from the 1830s in the collection of Cooper Hewitt Museum with some exquisite strawberry embroidery. You may recognize the strawberries because I took that motif and put it on my strawberry dress last year. And personally, I think it's just such a lovely motif that I've been putting it on everything from reticules to guess what, housewives. Now let's talk about this particular original pouch. Honestly, I think there's a good chance that the original pocketbook, as Cooper and Hewitt calls it, was actually a housewife. The Cooper Hewitt lists the dimensions of this as approximately six by 17 inches, which I don't see how this can be that long unless it extended downwards quite significantly, such as for a housewife. Honestly, I wish I could see how it looked on the inside, but as I don't have any further images of this, I went with what they had online. What I did first is I digitized these strawberries as is, and you can see it in my video about how to digitize. For the exterior of the housewife, I wanted to put three other images. So I took the border of the original pocketbook and put in other images that I've done in the past and just pop them in regardless of whether or not they really matched the theme of strawberries because let's face it, it's mine and I want it to reflect me and the things that I'm proud of. And in particular, I was very proud of these cranes that I did based on a uh, Korean embroidery. And I also want popped in my dogs because what says Masosin more than fluffy white dogs? So this 18th century Korean crane is something that I'm really proud of because it is based on actual Korean rank badges. And of course my dog, I'm really proud of because it's my dog, Gideon. I then started stitching this out.
I embroidered the main one out, I cut out the design with a 3 quarter inch seam allowance on all sides. This will get trimmed, but I find that going larger to smaller is easier than working smaller to larger. I got a piece of wool broadcloth or flannel or whatever I have in the house since it really just won't be visible at all but something really kind of tightly woven and a piece of silk for the inside. For the inside of my housewife, I'm using a very pretty green silk. This one is completely new. I got it as a remnant from Renaissance Fabrics and I absolutely love it. I was originally gonna use some rem other remnant, but then like just seeing how it looked with this panel, it just looks so good. I then pin these together, the silks on the outside, the right sides pointing out, and the wool sandwich in between the two layers of the silk. I pinned it all together and then went to my Baby Lock Soprano and stitched it out with a 2.5 millimeter stitch about one quarter of an inch away from the design end. I then got my ruler and a rotary cutter and cut it so that there was a 3 8 inch seam allowance around the perimeter of the housewife. So for my pocket, what I did is I actually cut out the pocket and just kind of trimmed it. Then I brought it to my iron and ironed down the top flap. I actually use heat and bond hem tape to just kind of glue down the top. I actually find that it really gives a little bit more stability because the glue really just kind of stiffens it. So I personally really like it for pocket edges when it comes to housewives. I then pinned it to the bottom most of the housewife and then I stitched it down as well. I'm actually supposed to do this before I stitched the rest of it down, but you know, shh, it worked. Please note that these edges will all be covered by the binding, which is next. At this point, you can just use pre-made bias tape, but I prefer to use silks so it could match. So I cut a 1.75 inch wide piece of silk, folded the, and ironed down 3 eighths of an inch away from the raw edge along the whole length of the tape and ironed down a half inch seam allowance at one end. I then pinned that folded edge right side to right side to the housewife, raw edge to raw edge, matching up all the raw edges and started pinning it down. I like to pin one side at a time since I do mitered corners by the machines. To do the mitered corners, it's surprisingly simple to do on a machine. I sew until I'm about half inch away from the corner and then go back and forth, cut the thread and then take it off my machine. I then fold the silk at a 45 degree angle away from the corner and then fold it back now the right way towards the next edge. I then start sewing again, this time again starting half an inch away from that mitered edge and then go to the next corner and then repeat this all over again. I did this for all four corners, including the corners that were greater than 90 degrees. It's about the same idea. After that, I turn the tape around the edges and pin it down. and I sew it down on the inside, being sure to use tiny stitches that can only minimally show up. I do about five to six stitches per inch, and I often toss in about three or four extra stitches on each minor corner to keep it nice and neat.
Now it's time to add the pockets on the inside. As you can see from these other housewives in history, they're all different and designed to make sense only for the user. So I'm gonna do my personal favorite layout, which includes pockets for scissors and thimbles and a, and a smaller pin cushion, but a large pocket for the goodies I use every single day. The big pocket is already on. Let's start with the scissors pocket. To be honest, just having it be made out of silk would be way too flimsy and the scissors would just rip right through the silk. So I get a piece of wool and cut it to a scissor-like shape. And I use my little scissors here to, as a guide for this. After I have the wool the shape I like it, I just get a piece of silk and I cover it using hem tape. Hem tape itself provides a lot of stability. I then pin it where I want it to be and use tiny stitches around eight to the inch to go around the silk and the wool and make sure that it's exactly where I want it to be. Um, I like to sew through the silk and the wool, but not necessarily the outside layer so that nothing shows on the outside. I like to put a little bit of silk ribbon to tie it. For the pin cushion, I cut out my embroidered panel and iron in all four sides. I stitch it down on three of the sides before I stuff it loosely with some cotton fill. And then I stitch down the top as well. So now that I have a little pin cushion. For the thimbles pocket, I cut up the small pocket and I use hem tape for one edge of it and then iron down the other three edges and I pin it where I want it to go and just sew it on, on the three edges. I also sew in two loops of elastic to hold my seam rippers and my bone corner tool. Now for my needles, I used to have a tiny separate pin cushion but I personally found that it, I just kept on losing needles into it. So now instead of having that, I like to use some wool scraps. I personally have a lot of wool samples lying around the house. You know, uh, these are from Hainsworth. So I just use some pinking shears to cut out a couple of squares and then sew them down. Finally, I got a piece of one yard long ribbon and sewed it to one end of the housewife so that I can tie it all together with a pretty bow. Now to fill it. Personally, I find I use my housewife nearly every day when I sew. And that's it. I love these darling little housewives. If you'd like to stitch up housewife of your own, I've definitely linked some of the shops I love below. So definitely go and take a look at those kits. If you are very set on an embroidered housewife, I will link the files as well as the kits below. I will probably only have a couple of kits for sale right now because I'm pretty busy, but I'll list a couple more, especially as it gets closer to the holidays. But really, there's some beautiful non-embroidered ones, so definitely give those a look. Thank you again for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more historical and ridiculous sewing content. Now, I, as usual, I always get asked, what am I wearing? Today, I am wearing a blouse by Miss Patina. The dress itself is really awesome. I don't know if you could tell. It actually has 
pin tucks, which is pretty cool, but it also has a bow in the back. I actually just got this and I got this from Linen Naive. If you are interested, I'll definitely link that below as well. So enjoy, have a great time and see you next time.